let's go ahead now and get into chapter 19 where we're focused on the lymphatic and the immune systems. Um, for this, we're going to put a heavy emphasis on lymphatic system simply because this is kind of the side that deals with like a physical macroscopic organ based um, system versus the immune system, which is we're mainly looking at the physiology side. So we're really not going to get too far into the immune system. We're going to focus on the lymphatic system for this chapter. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to get into with this. We're going to talk about the location, structure, function, and components of lymphatic system. We'll talk about how it integrates with other body systems. Um, we'll talk about how lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes are organized and how they, their structure leads to their function. Um, we'll also talk a little, bit about, a little bit about the organization of the immune system and then primary and secondary adaptive immune responses. But again, we're not going to get too heavy with the immune response. So for this video, we're going to focus on the functions of the lymphatic and the immune system. So we're going to talk about the overall functions, look at some of the organization of the immune system, kind of the steps involved, and then primary and secondary adaptive immune responses. So let's look at the overview of the anatomy of the lymphatic system. So we have various organs um, and vessels that are gonna be involved with this. So we start at the top and work our way down. Um, we have the adenoids, which are right here, the tonsils right here in the throat. Um, everything here in green are going to be those lymphatic vessels. We see the thymus, which is this little lobed shaped organ that is right above the heart. Um, going down, we have the spleen right here. And then these little nodules we see in these green areas right, are the lymph nodes. There's a close relationship between the lymphatic system and the cardiovascular system, mainly because fluids are going to, quote, leak out of the capillaries when performing an exchange, right? Exchanging like oxygen and carbon dioxide and all that. And some of that fluid does not make it back into the capillaries, right? As the blood heads back towards the heart. Um, the lymphatic system can take that excess fluid, what we now call interstitial fluid, um, absorb it from the tissues and then return it back to the cardiovascular system. So if we look at the main structures, we really can break it down to lymphatic vessels, tissues, and organs. So lymphatic vessels, this is gonna be like the capillaries, the vessels, the ducts, right? These guys are again gonna to try to pull up excess fluid from the tissues and put it back in the bloodstream. We're also going to distribute lymphocytes and other white blood cells. Um, and then the lymphatic vessels will also help with the absorption and transportation of lipids that we get from our food. Lymphoid tissues will include things like your tonsils as well as mucosa associated with lymphoid tissue or malt, which we'll talk about a little bit. This is going to help to support your lymphocytes being produced, stored, and distributed. And then lymphoid organs like the nodes, the thymus, the red bone marrow, and the spleen, they're going to also support lymphocyte production, storage, and distribution, but they're also going to work on filtering blood and lymph for anything that's not supposed to be there, so debris, pathogens, cells that have become abnormal or had gone haywire, right? Those can all be filtered out. So you think of like the vessels as transportation, lymphoid tissues as white blood cell production, and then lymphoid organs as filtration. That might help you um, remember who's who. Let's go ahead and talk about how the immune system is organized. And again, we're getting really gloss over this. Um, the immune system is very complicated. It gets very convoluted very fast. Um, so we will save a lot of that for physiology. But we do want to at least get an idea of how the immune system is organized before we go through all this. So first and foremost, your first line of defense, right? This is instantaneous, right? So it's going to help you as soon as a pathogen even tries to get in. This is what we call innate, meaning it doesn't matter um, what the pathogen is, this is going to protect you from any and all pathogens. And it's usually we're talking about some sort of barrier. Prevention, right? If we can prevent something from getting into your body, that is the best way to defend ourselves, right? It's a lot easier to defend or to just not get sick than it is to fight off sickness. So things like your skin, things like your mucous membranes, 
they're going to help prevent pathogens from even getting in your body, right? So that's why it's our first line of defense. It doesn't matter, you know, what the pathogen is. We're going to block it out. The second line of defense, this is like if something were to get past the skin, get past the mucous membranes. This is also innate, meaning it doesn't matter what the pathogen is. We're going to use these um, tactics regardless of the pathogen. And so this is where now we're bringing in certain white blood cells, we're bringing in inflammation, right? That way we can, basically our immune system goes, oh snap, there is a pathogen here, right? Discover it and then get rid of any cells that have been killed or are abnormal now, maybe they're infected, um, get rid of the pathogenic cells themselves. So get rid of like the bacteria, if there's any bacteria and then promote healing uh, after the tissue that's been damaged has been damaged. The third line of defense, this is a lot slower because this is adaptive. This is gonna be specific to the pathogen we're dealing with. So this is where lymphocytes come in. This is where we're like, okay, what, what are we dealing with? Are, is it a virus? Is it bacteria? Is it fungal? What type of bacteria? What type of virus? Have we seen this before? This is to eradicate right? Get rid of that pathogen as well as retain memory so that we, if we ever are exposed to that particular pathogen again, we can initiate a response even faster, right? That's the whole point with that one is like, and this is the, the third line defense. This is where um, like vaccines come in. This is the vaccines are meant to stimulate this last line of defense of like, hey, we're going to teach your immune system how to fight a pathogen. Right? That's what we're trying to do with the third line of defense. So again, we can compare innate and adaptive. Again, innate really just comes down to, it doesn't matter what the pathogen is. Let it be a virus, a bacteria, doesn't matter. If it's not supposed to be there, innate responses will handle it. So your skin will block out all sorts of bacteria. It doesn't matter. It doesn't only block certain bacteria, it blocks bacteria. Mucus hair, those can trap all sorts of debris. Um, internally, we have things like basophils and mast cells, we have natural killer cells, we have neutrophils, right, monocytes and macrophages that all will just engulf and destroy pathogens regardless of the type they are, right? We have complements, proteins, the complement system, which basically, um, in to sum it up, kind of like punches holes in the um, pathogen like in a bacterial cell like punch a hole in it basically um, those are all going to happen no matter what pathogen it is so it could be a cold it could be the flu it could be um, some sort of bacterial infection you were exposed to it doesn't matter right all of these will kick in ex immediately if not all you know right as soon as the pathogen arrives right they're like instantaneous or very fast the adaptive immunity, this is where we're like, okay, what exactly are we dealing with? And how do we specifically attack this pathogen, right? This is where we get into our lymphocytes, the T lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes, right? Um, B and T cells are gonna be involved in destroying cells that have been infected. So like a T cell can help destroy a cell that was infected with like a virus. B cells are going to be producing antibodies. They're like little antibody factories. And again, this is what's going to happen to, in a slower response, right? This is like you're, you're calling in the big guns, but it's going to take some time to position those big guns to fight, right? Um, that's kind of the way you can think of it. Um, again, this is also the framework that we're utilizing when we vaccinate someone. We're basically giving an important piece of the pathogen to the immune system and kind of presenting it to them going hey this is something you don't want to deal with and then the adaptive immune response kicks in and basically builds a game plan right on how do we fight that particular pathogen right based on the information that the vaccine gives it now in terms of how fast this is um, that depends if it's your first time ever being exposed, right? It's the first time you've ever been exposed to a certain pathogen. Let's say it's the first time you were exposed to a particular cold virus. You're, that's going to be your primary response. 
So we need the antigen to bind to a receptor. We have to go through a cloning process. We have to activate those B cells. We have to then create a bunch of plasma cells to create antibodies to fight that cold. And then we're gonna create some memory cells to store that information for later. And so this takes a little bit of time. But if you look on the right, the secondary response, this is the second time you're exposed to that same cold. We see that the response is very fast, right? We go from, because we have these memory cells, they're already knowing what to do. They already know how to make the antibodies. They're gonna just produce plasma cells left and right, make those antibodies to fight off that cold. So the second time you get exposed, your response is faster, right? It's faster and faster.